Released in 2001 as a launch title for the Nintendo GameCube, Luigi's Mansion had shocked the world when it came out, flying off of store shelves so fast that the stores found it physically impossible to keep up with the demand. Okay, it didn't exactly do that. This was the first occasion of Nintendo not creating a Mario game as a launch title for a home console. A Luigi game caught fans off guard, which hindered the game's sales. While Luigi's Mansion was the fifth best-selling GameCube game of all time, it didn't perform well when compared to launch titles from other consoles at the time, such as the PlayStation 2. Nevertheless, it was welcomed by the Nintendo fans that didn't mind seeing Mario's little brother instead. Given that the game is relatively short, and easily beatable within a few hours, people were bound to start losing interest in repetitive gameplay. Those determined to keep the game alive began their glitch hunts, and even two decades after release, the hunt is still not over. Today, we'll be giving you an inside look at the efforts that cracked Luigi's Mansion wide open. I am the Glitch Doctor, and this is Luigi's Mansion's Glitches and Exploits. Mario? <laughs> Starting off on the file select screen, you can perform a minor visual glitch with the file copy function. Make sure that you have at least one empty file and one saved file right next to each other. While you have the empty file selected, you have to quickly move the control stick towards the saved file, then rapidly press Y, then A. If you did it fast enough, you should be able to see the saved file's info overlay under the empty file which is currently being copied to. Once you begin the game and pass all the introductory cutscenes, start to make your way into the parlor. Normally, when you suck up the candles that are on either side of the painting just above the bookcase, a cutscene will play and ghosts will spawn directly after. However, if you suck up one set of candles and leave either one or two candles still lit on the far side of the other set, proceed to make your way to that far side of the room. From there, use your vacuum and while tilting it up slightly, you should have sucked up the candles while being away from the hitbox that starts the cutscene. Of course, you can't really do much with this, as walking into a hitbox that engulfs most of the room will start the cutscene. After you clear the parlor and the following anteroom, you will enter the wardrobe room. Here you will find a new type of ghost, the garbage ghost. Of course, the name garbage ghost implies that this is a very filthy ghost, who likes to throw banana peels all over the place. When you run into a banana peel, Luigi will comically slip and fall on his back. Now, if you run into the banana peel just as you're sucking up the ghost into the vacuum, the peel will fly and disappear as though you've slipped and hurt yourself, but Luigi will remain untouched. This is because the game is already preoccupied with the vacuuming of the ghost animation, which at that time overrides any other animation. Connected to the wardrobe room is a door leading to a balcony with a lone toad crying in the dark. By simply walking into Toad for a little bit when he's in this spot, Luigi will push him out of the way. Though you can't push him any other direction. It doesn't matter whether he's crying or not, because even after consoling him you can pull off the same effect. But Toad is good for more than just being a pushover. In the dark foyer, when talking to Toad, he'll be upset over the fact that he could not find Mario and has no idea what he should do next. From there you're left with two options. Either agree to help him and he will turn the lights on, or reject his request and leave him hanging. If you say no to him, and skin him with your Game Boy Horror immediately after, and then talk to him, the icon that is used to signify Toad in the text box will turn into Luigi's icon, and the text box color will be changed from blue to green. Another minor glitch, you can talk to Toad from across this railing. This may seem useless at first glance, but can actually be utilized in a rather cursed glitch. You can try to outsmart the game by creating a cursed file. First, you'll want to talk to Toad and agree to help him turn the lights on. Next, take as much damage as you can. In the normal mansion, the barbed door leading to Area 2 will deal 5 HP of damage when trying to open it, 
and the chandelier will deal 10 damage when hit by it. In the hidden mansion, they will each deal 10 and 20 damage respectively. Once your health is down to 10 HP in the normal mansion, or 20 HP in the hidden mansion, walk over to the area where this drawer is, and turn Luigi to the down left direction. Hold the vacuum out and walk back and forth along this line in the rug. Continue going on and off of the rug until the chandelier begins to fall. As soon as the cutscene starts, press A to talk to Toad. Because the room is lit and you've already talked to him before, there will only be one section of text that is displayed. This next part is hard to time, but right around the moment the chandelier drops, press A to clear the text and bring up the save menu. If done at the right time, you should hear Luigi dying, followed by the game over music. If you save here and then leave the menu, you will see the game over logo, which will then fade back to the title screen like usual. If you try to load the file again, Luigi will still be alive in the lab, even though he'll be tuckered out when making your decision of where you want to go. The game, in turn, is already smart enough to know not to leave Luigi's HP at zero, instead leaving you with a whopping whole health point. Kind of a disappointment that you can't make all the files cursed and sell it on eBay. For the rest of this video, we'll be bouncing around different parts of the game to show off some of the cooler glitches and exploits. In Area 2, you'll come across a button which will release booze hiding under a trap door, and they'll disperse throughout the entire mansion. You can find these boos in most rooms that are lit up, with there being 50 boos in total. Later on, when you first arrive at the mirror room, the door will lock itself with barbed wire, leaving you to fend off a bunch of invisible grabber ghosts. After defeating them, a chest that contains the fire medallion will spawn, and collecting it will allow you to suck up fire and use it to your advantage. However, by capturing the boo first, then grabbing the fire medallion during the suck up animation will cause Egad to call you about the boo you just caught while you're holding the medallion. If you save and then reset the game, when you load back into the save file, you'll gain the ability to use fire without having Egad to tell you about the medallion. And not only that, but you also don't have to light the candles to escape the mirror room, and the door isn't even locked anymore. You may have noticed while I was talking, the boo remains still while having its HP drained. This is actually a strategy that's been known as far back as 2012. YouTube user named ZanyWitch7 first discovered this phenomenon, and it was popularized when a user named Coopery found it just a year later, saving many speedrunners tons of frustration, especially with higher HP boos. To do this trick, you'll want to start sucking up the boo by holding your vacuum with the right trigger, then hold the left trigger as well. Once you've gotten 10 HP off the boo, quickly let go of the right trigger and press it again. Doing this will cause the boo to cackle while remaining still. Repeat this for every 10 HP, and you'll be able to suck up most boos with ease. One thing to note is that each boo has a maximum of 15 cackles in it before it just takes off, with no force powerful enough to stop it. Based on this, you're able to suck up boos with a maximum of 150 HP off just this strategy alone. However, you can try to preserve some cackles in boos that are over 150 HP. For example, you can capture the boo in Breaker Room in one cycle, even though that boo has 200 HP. Using a method involving dragging the boo to the left side of the room, then pulling it back slightly with each R pump will allow you to drag him the rest of the way once he's out of cackles. This method is pretty difficult though, so don't expect to get it on your first try, or even your 100th try. Let's talk a little more about elements. The amount of element you have is gauged by a meter. You can actually run the meter empty, but still have a tiny bit of element left. It's hard to get it deliberately, and if you're attempting to get this by just barely holding the left trigger, that can be even worse because you never know when exactly it'll run out. It may take quite a while, but given enough attempts, and you might be able to pull it off. When collecting certain items, Luigi will hold said object towards the camera, and then put it in his pocket. One of these items are gems. The gems, however, despawn after some time if they aren't collected. If you happen to grab the gem the frame that it despawns, the game will crash. During the later part of the mansion, you will come across Sir Weston, the Arctic Traveler frozen solid. Using your fire, you can melt the ice he's surrounded in. If you don't suck him up in time, the ice will spawn back. If the first thing that came to your mind was a nearly frame-perfect trick again, you'd be correct. Starting to suck up Sir Weston just as the ice respawns will keep the ice spawned, even after sucking him up completely. 
Continuing with this theme, during the final fight with Bowser, you can use his own attacks against him by shooting a spike bomb he throws right back at his head in a rather brutal turn for an E-rated game. King Boo will follow suit by escaping the now headless Bowser puppet, however the head will still hang around, shooting ice balls at Luigi while you're trying to finish the job. If you get hit by one of these balls, Luigi will freeze into a column of ice. For seemingly no reason at times, if you break out of the column, it won't despawn, but rather the column will remain in the same spot for the rest of the fight. Perhaps he's sympathizing with the guy whose afterlife he just ruined? This is a pretty popular one amongst fans who researched the lore of the game. It's also something brought up on this channel in the past with the previous Luigi's Mansion glitches videos. In the attic of the mansion, you'll come across a room with telephones. After beating the third boss, Bulasis, if you enter this room after the events of the blackout, one of the phones will be ringing. Pick it up, and after a quick prank call you can talk to Toad, who will tell you about what's been going on. If you end up using the phone in the middle, look closely at the back wall of the room and wait for lightning to strike. You may notice that Luigi's shadow is hanging off the ground. This is simply a camera glitch involving the fact that it zoomed in and close to the ground. Connecting that with a theory of a subtle easter egg is fun and all, but not true. In fact, YouTuber Dustin Bragg made a video that demonstrates what actually happens. Here's a neat little party trick for you. In the second floor washroom, you'll find an elemental ghost chilling in the toilet. Using the correct element to counter it, you can destroy him and the room will light up. If you scan the mirror using the Game Boy Horror right around the time he despawns, the camera will pan over to this chest, even though the mirror will still be spinning. In fact, it'll keep increasing in speed. Even if you walk out of the room and back in, it'll keep going. Right across the hall, you'll find a grandmother doing her thing, whether that be knitting, weaving, crocheting, etc, etc. When you finish her off, a chest with a key will spawn, which leads back to the hallway in Area 1 to the twins' room. When you get there, the twins will want to play hide and seek. After humoring them by agreeing to their game, they'll be upset that you cheated, whether or not you knew about the book in the study, or legitimately went around randomly opening boxes until you got the correct ones. From here, they'll hop in their vehicles and attack you. If you suck up a twin when he's at the right height and towards the top left part of the room, and he feels like cooperating, he can fly past the globe on the drawers and clip out of bounds. This can be done with either twin, or both of them. Now specifically if you clip the red one out of bounds, it won't count that you sucked up the twins, even if you did collect the blue one. You could also just opt to capture neither of them. The room still lights up, and yes, you guessed it, the game does not recollect those ghosts at all. You might be noticing that the game is progressively getting more broken, but we're just getting started. Perhaps one of the most widely talked about glitches that anyone can perform. After fighting the first boss, Chauncey, Luigi will spawn back in the nursery, and a rather large chest will spawn as well, which contains the first boss key that unlocks the door blocked off by barbed wire in the foyer. Well, what if I told you that there was a way that you could skip getting the key and get to almost any other room you want? When you finish fighting Chauncey, Hold up right on the control stick. Doing this will make Luigi run as soon as he spawns in, and since the chest spawn time is a tiny bit slower, you can stand right behind the chest. It won't give you much room to stand considering the chest is pinning Luigi up against the wall and probably giving him claustrophobia. What does claustrophobia mean? It means he's afraid of Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Stop it Patrick, you're scaring him! Ho ho ho! If you hold up and either tap A a couple of times, or hold the right trigger for a little bit and then let go, you will go out of bounds and will be trapped between floors. However, you can really only see the active rooms below you. An odd side effect to this is that during the initial clip, if you manage to pause at a specific time while clipping out of bounds, the game will crash. It's unclear as to what may cause this. This out of bounds glitch was first discovered by fellow Luigi's Mansion speedrunner NG707 in 2011. However, much more would be developed in the years to come. Throughout the mansion, Luigi will have a number of enemies attacking him aside from regular ghosts, including bats, plates, flying books, and so on. If you manage to get hit by one of these, you could potentially see that Luigi's angle will skew, even if for a moment. Now you do have two options for movement. If you pause the game, 
you'll notice that you can either walk around in standard or sidestep mode. Walking around in standard mode will make Luigi face the direction you're holding while walking. However, in sidestep mode, he'll keep the same direction he's facing while walking a different way, with his angle only changing when you use the C-Stick. This moveset only applies in dark rooms though, as for rooms let up, he'll walk as if standard mode was on. Meanwhile, when you walk around while holding the vacuum out, he'll walk as if he was in sidestep mode. Getting hit by an enemy while in sidestep mode can sometimes leave the skewed angle, providing you don't reset your angle by knocking on a wall or getting hit again. This exploit was discovered and explored just two years after the original Out of Bounds discovery by a user named Clydestorm, which is what we'll tackle next. When you start Out of Bounds, you'll be able to explore some nearby rooms, and even get stuck for a few seconds when opening doors. After being careful not to get scared by any ceiling surprise ghosts by aiming your flashlight towards the areas they spawn, you'll come to a halt by the wall that you can't see. You can actually get around this though. First, you'll want to perform a skew off the nearby bed by having Luigi's body face forward while his head faces to the right, which you can do by simply spinning him with a C-Stick. Then you want to stand right near the bat so that it becomes alerted to your presence and flies towards you. The moment the bat hits, you'll want to tap the C-Stick to the right. Doing so should keep Luigi's angle skewed. Depending on how you perform this, you could get quite a few results for a skew. If Luigi's newly skewed angle is too shallow, then it won't quite work as the hitbox just doesn't extend enough past the wall to clip by. If your angle is too good, you'll more than likely be sent back in bounds. This is what an optimal skew would look like. If you got this, then you're good to go. Once you've got that down, spin clockwise in this corner while moving ever so slightly to the right. This will allow you to traverse through more rooms and see other places you couldn't normally reach at that point in the game. There are also another couple bats further down the hall that you could skew off of. The consistently fast method for skewing off of these is done by first resetting your angle so that you face a hard left direction by knocking on this wall, then pulling out your vacuum to bring the bats closer to you. When you're ready to skew, let go of the vacuum while walking towards the bat, and right as you're about to hit it, tap the C-Stick to the right once more. This skew in particular can be a bit finicky, so sometimes you might need to hold the C-Stick right for just a little bit longer in order to get a good skew. Some people found this to be quite hard. How could someone feasibly pull all this off? That's where a user you may recognize threw his hat in the ring to help make this trick a lot more lenient. Respected Tool Assistant Speedrunner Sock Folder found a strategy that was more console friendly, as opposed to what Clydestorm originally did with the help of some tools running on third-party software. After you get the bats close enough to you, hit Y to bring up the minimap. Hold left on the control stick and quickly press Y twice. Doing so should start the skew process. Let go of the control stick and hold right on the C-Stick. Tap Y twice quickly, rinse and repeat. Then let go of the C-Stick and get rid of the minimap, and you should have a great skew to work with. With this skew, if you can see other rooms by walking backwards into them, then you can drop down between the walls and arrive at a room you aren't meant to be in then. You can do this in a number of places, where you'll mainly fall into one of the rooms in the basement. These finds got Clydestorm thinking, what if it were possible to just skip right to the final boss with this? So he got to work. After a bunch of testing, his theory was confirmed possible, although at the time, it wasn't quite doable on a console by a human just yet, as it involved precise inputs in order to get the skews needed, along with some very difficult maneuvering later on. Sock Folder pulled through once again, finding a more consistent method which helped runners and casual gamers alike. To do this, once you've got the skew off of the bat, pause and switch to standard mode, and turn yourself with a C-Stick so that Luigi will be facing the screen, and then tilt the flashlight up. Pause and switch back over to sidestep right after this. Walk into the top right corner at the edge of the hallway and put the flashlight all the way down. You'll probably end up seeing the rec room from here. Continue holding up right on the control stick and then pause. From here you can do one of two methods. Select standard mode, and then you'll want to hold up and just as much to the right as you possibly can without selecting sidestep mode again. Or, hold up right on the control stick and tap left on the d-pad once. From here, you'll want to press A and then X in rapid fashion so that the game will unpause and you will fall down just outside of the hallway leading to the secret altar. Finally, the only thing you have left to do is maneuver very carefully along a fine line to walk towards the altar. 
go too far to the left and you'll hit the King Boo cutscene, which will force Luigi back to the foyer, the starting room of the game. Go too far right, and you'll be unable to move with the exception of moving the flashlight up and down, and your only option being to reset the console. But do it correctly, and you will have successfully skipped a majority of the game, leaving you with only one remaining battle. Sock Folder again pulled through for the homies, by finding a safer strategy that you can use for this portion as well. You'll first want to walk to the right until this curved pillar is on the left side of the screen like so. Then pull out your Game Boy Horror with X and turn towards the section of wall to the right of the door. You want this section of wall to be on the left side of the screen just like the pillar from before. From here, hold up and quickly tap X twice, just as you would with the minimap from the easier SKU setup. Repeat this a few times. If you start to see that you have to turn more to the left in order to see this section of wall, then just leave the pillar in your line of sight. Continue this a few more times and you should be in the secret altar. Upon completing the King Boo fight, the rest of the game plays out normally, with the only difference being that the results screen will show you the ghosts captured for Area 1, then skip all the way to Area 4 with King Boo being the only portrait. As much as family is important, you will have successfully scammed an old man of his years of hard work, leaving most of the portrait ghosts unharmed and free to roam in the dead of night. Oh? Mario? There are other ways to break the sequence of events in the game, with speedrunners inventing an honestly arbitrary category known as Van Gore Key. Essentially, the route goes something like this. After Chauncey, clip out of bounds, and utilizing skews, head over to the Astral Hall. Since you're just above the storage room, you can open the door to the observatory and get scared by one of the ghosts that will spawn, causing you to clip back in bounds. Complete the room, release the booze, have a long conversation about nothing, Go back out of bounds again using a re-entry method. Go through different rooms you aren't supposed to access yet. Collect the key in the rec room which will be needed to access Van Gore later. And eventually end up with having collected all three elements. Fire, water, and ice. Having all these elements unlocks the potential for finishing the game. While out of bounds, one of the rooms you can access by performing a similar method to the clip used to get the King Boo early is the pipe room which only offers a few grabber ghosts and a key unlocking the only other locked door in the hallway. You'll now need to get back out of the room right after, though you can't do that as the key to open the pipe room door was never acquired, thus leaving Luigi forever stuck in this room, which will eventually cause him to keel over and die. Wow! There is a way out of this though. Using one of the grabber ghosts in the room, it is possible to clip through this corner of the floor by forcing the ghost to pull you to the left allowing you to walk to the chest with the key and clip out of bounds. Doing so will lead you to just outside the hallway leading up to the secret altar. You can use the door here to get back through the hallway and head over to Sir Weston. Once completed, you can use the King Boo cutscene to send yourself back to the foyer. After having done everything in the route, you can simply walk up to the Safari Room with the Ice Element to capture the Elemental Ghosts, and upon completion of the room and collection of the key, you can go right to Van Gore, skipping less of the game compared to beating King Boo early. As it was mentioned previously, if you end up back in bounds, as long as you can make it to the foyer, you can get back out of bounds. When you first played the game, you might recall having to use this ball to hit Chauncey so you can start the battle with him. The ball can come in handy though for clipping back behind the chest. Vacuum the ball up and hold it while you line up Luigi with these lines in the door, and move the ball over so that it's just off to the left compared to the doorknob. Then from there, just tap X and let go of the vacuum. Now exit the room and re-enter. If it's placed in the right spot, Luigi should pop right back behind the chest, allowing you to clip through the wall once more. Not only can you break through the walls, but you can break the lighting as well. When the foyer is dark, if you access the washroom while out of bounds by using the other door to the washroom right above it, you can clip down by rubbing up against some objects. Talk to Toad and he'll tell you a sad story. Agree to help him and you'll turn the lights on. Now, when you warp through the mirror back to the foyer, the lights will suddenly turn on, even though the toad there will still be bawling his eyes out. Skipping ahead to different parts in the game can also have some peculiar side effects. Normally, after beating an area boss, when going to the next area, you're able to find the booze and lit up rooms and capture them. If you don't capture the previous area's boss and collect its key, 
The boos in the following area will spawn at first, however they'll suddenly just disappear. In the courtyard, there's this little ramp that leads to the ladder going down the well. Well did you know you can just fall right into it? Similar to how in Super Mario 64's Cool Cool Mountain, due to some complicated modeling leading to a misalignment, you can fall right into a very, very small crevice in the floor to either collect a star or die. Despite not having the same issue with the model in Luigi's Mansion, it's possible that it could be an oversight due to how the collision was handled in the game, as the entire mansion's collision is condensed into only one file. The resulting glitch, however, won't really do anything cool. I mean, you could softlock Luigi, so I guess that's something? In a very similar fashion, you can actually clip through the ground not far from the ramp in the courtyard behind the mansion. This was actually found back in 2011 by a YouTuber named Ty Anderson. While playing around, it seems that somehow Luigi was able to clip through the ground moments after getting scared by a ceiling surprise ghost. This is a similar phenomena to when you are out of bounds and fall back in bounds by getting scared. The only difference being that the scare animation and the clip happen separately. There's a chance Luigi could have been scared in the absolute perfect spot, possibly along one of these lines, which forced him to fall down through the ground. I spent many hours trying to get this glitch to work, but alas, it was not meant to be so. So as of today, this is the only known video of this glitch existing. By now, some of you might be in disbelief at the events already shown here today. Some of you may even be in denial at the validity of such happenings. If this is the case with you, then you might want to strap in, as we're about to enter a new zone. One where logic is turned on its head, and the laws of gravity, space, and even time are completely ignored. This is an area that we will call the What the Fuck Zone. Back in 2017, a runner by the name of Michael T00 was doing speedruns of the Hidden Mansion. After having some bad luck with the previous runs and the urge to reset, he attempted a soft reset by holding down the X, B, and Start buttons on the GameCube controller for a few seconds. However, he must have been a bit hesitant to keep them held down as it didn't work. So, upon trying again, he hit different buttons until it eventually worked. But the very next run, something was different. Usually after you collect a key, a mini-map showing what room it unlocks next pops up, which you can close out of when you know where you're going next. But that didn't happen though. In fact, it never showed up at all. Rather, he was able to continue playing. After thinking he must have been seeing things, he pressed on, skipping yet another cutscene from the following key. After both himself and a fellow runner named Official Glitch Doctor noticed something was up, Michael decided to perform a definitive test by not spamming the B button to close out of the mini-map. Dude! He's not showing up! <laughs> I broke the game! I broke the game! His suspicions were confirmed. He had broken the mini-map. So, what happened here? Well, as it turns out, while holding the X, B, and Start buttons, the game will still register other inputs such as walking and vacuuming. Although in a special case, if you pull up the mini-map with a Y button just mere moments before the game resets, the mini-map will be brought up for only a moment, and you will be brought back to the title screen. From here on out, as long as you keep the game running, the minimap will not show up again, and you can't even bring it up with the Y button. The only way to correct this would be simply restarting the console. Here's an event that was found just very recently on accident by prominent Luigi's Mansion speedrunning member HD Lax. While out of bounds, he was practicing the skews and was doing door skip, which is done by performing a skew off these yellow bats to pass by the door you're usually meant to open. Immediately after performing the clip, the jingle played similar to when a gold mouse spawns, or when you activate the mouse hole in the butler's room. Mario. This glitch didn't make any sense, as one of the only times you would hear those specific noises would be after completing Van Gore, the portrait ghost right before the final boss. What exactly is happening here? The only thing that he is doing in this video is performing door skip, and you might be able to point out that he is entering a room very briefly before pulling off the trick. This is normal though, as sometimes you might have a good enough skew to where you briefly enter the treasure room. There are no keys in this room whatsoever, and even if there was, there was nothing in the room that would be able to make this sort of sound. Well, after a sudden realization while writing this very script you're hearing me read from, in this video, you hear the key mainly coming from the right side. 
This means that any room towards Luigi's right side would have this occur. It doesn't seem plausible that it could be Van Gore's key though, as the timing between the sounds of the key spawning and hitting the floor don't quite line up with how it does after you capture them. Rather, there is one other room that comes to mind, the fortune teller's room. Objects of interest in this room are the crystal ball that Madame Clairvoy uses to contact the deceased, a piece of cheese which will activate a mouse that spawns money when scanned, and some candles. Wait, that's it! It must be that while doing so, the crystal ball is weirdly activated, and a ritual is being performed without your knowledge of it. It must be some sort of weird event as it's mostly quiet, but who knows what could be happening behind those walls. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone is now dumber for having listened to it. What really might be happening is that the candles must be somehow activated when swapping back and forth between the rooms. This isn't the only occasion of weird stuff happening with the candles while out of bounds. There are times where some of these candles are oddly brighter than usual, with the flame standing still completely. Perhaps somehow this sort of thing happened to these candles? A lot of the cutscenes that play throughout the game are triggered by Luigi touching an invisible box, something we'll call a hitbox. In the observatory, when you look through the telescope, you'll find the moon floating in the middle of space. Well, as logic would have it, you can then proceed to walk into that space. Some shooting stars will come down, and using one of those, you can blow up the moon, which will reveal a glistening road towards one of the game's critical items involving Mario, a star. Any inputs you make on the controller are refused, as Luigi will not move so the cutscene can play out properly. But if you walk away from the edge of the platform before the moon finishes blowing up, the cutscene revealing the road won't play, until you walk back towards the edge of the platform again. Doing something similar after fighting the third boss, Bulasis, can yield an interesting result. After collecting his key and running the 100 meter dash with Egad, you'll want to head up to the balcony once more. The only other door on the balcony can now be unlocked. Watching the cutscene, you'll find that the power to the entire mansion has gone out due to a blackout from some very convenient lightning strikes. Once again, the game refuses your inputs, leaving Luigi cowering in fear until the light show is over. Now, you can break Luigi free of this immobility by moving very carefully and using the Game Boy Horror to scan the nearby plant. You should hear the unlocking sound playing, and immediately after, see the text box where Luigi is saddened by the possibly dying plant. Once you progress the text box forward, you can exit out of the Game Boy Horror view and are now free to roam around. If you walk away from the door before the unlocking finishes, the blackout cutscene won't play until you return to the same spot again. On the other hand, if you time it right, you can scan the plan just as the cutscene plays, leaving Luigi frozen still and emotionless throughout the whole ordeal, including when talking to Egad. The text box will show up again after the conversation finishes, and will remain there until you either press A or B. This is something similar to text storage, which is akin to other storages of varying usage used in speedruns of games such as The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Despite the promising outcome, there's unfortunately no real use for this as of now. The same glitch can be applied in the artist's studio, where towards the end of the fight with ghosts in groups of three, if you burn the remaining three purple bombers, and then scan an object that will bring up a text box just before the artist Van Gore starts to speak, both Luigi and Van Gore will freeze in place during the text, and the text box for the object will appear after. Something to note as well, if you had not performed the minimap skip from earlier before doing this, you won't have to, as the text box being brought up while collecting a key will cancel out the minimap, with the only difference being that you don't have to restart the console to fix it. There's something else you can do regarding Van Gore, and it's really easy to do. After defeating him and watching the key spawn, ignore the key and leave the room. Then go to the balcony, and then go back into the hallway again. You should hear the sound of a key dropping. Repeat the process once more. Now on entering the studio, you might notice something's a little off about this key. When you go to pick it up, there will in fact be two keys. You can collect both of them, however, it will only bring up the minimap for the first one. Doing this won't result in anything, just that Luigi will be ecstatic about receiving the same key twice. However, if you don't go right back into the room after duping the key only once, you can continue going back and forth between the balcony and the hallway multiple times, which will result in multiple keys. This occurs as when you are in one room, and then go two rooms away from where you were, 
everything in that original room will despawn. Well, it just so happens that when you leave and come back in the area of the room, the objects are active again, and unbeknownst to the game, it will spawn the key again as it's performing the action that it was told to do when the room lit up the first time. Considering this is a special event, meaning nothing like it happens anywhere else in the game involving a key spawning from an object that isn't a chest, it's the only real dupe you can easily perform. This will not work on key chests or money chests, so you can forget about trying to get rich quick. It might be kinda sad to watch, but hey, at least Luigi can find joy in even the smallest of gifts. Even when you receive the same one over, and over, and over, and over. Going back to the Out of Bounds section, using the ball from Chauncey can not only help you clip behind the chest, but you can also bring it along with you in your ventures in between floors. Move just enough to where the vacuum can reach out and grab the ball. While holding the ball, you can then walk back into the wall and... Did the ball just turn into a door? Throughout the mansion, you have to suck up the booze in order to reach certain areas. Every time you capture one, Professor Eged will call you and cheer you on for collecting them. This is followed up by a prompt to save the game. If there's a nearby cloth, for instance the tablecloth, and if you pull it off almost all the way while leaving it hanging on just a bit, and then spawn and capture the boo, upon immediately sucking up the tablecloth right after, you will skip the text box and the save prompt. This can be done with any type of cloth, and is used a few times in the speedrun, with some being harder than others. This can also technically be done if you capture two boos at the same time, by coercing one into a room that already has another one spawned in. Couple that with the art pump strategy from before, and you will find success in completing a boo double. This will only end up skipping one of the EGAD calls, as cancelling a boo call with another boo counts as a skip. Another interesting quirk with the boos is if one escapes a room with 0 HP, and then he hides in an object in that room, you can spawn and capture him before he reaches the center of the room and says his line. If you manage to start vacuuming him as soon as he starts to speak, the game will freak out and the boo will have a seizure while your vacuum is just infinitely being held. The text box also can't make up its mind as to what it wants to do, so it opens and closes as much as a teenager on social media. At this point, all you can do is reset the game. Sometimes, more than one boo can hide in the same room. If you manage to activate two objects in a row containing boos, and start the process of the first boo entering the vacuum as the second one spawns, the first one will spiral out of control before straight up disappearing, and then reappearing without an HP counter. He'll stay there no matter what, even if you try to despawn him by leaving and re-entering the room. If you run into him, you'll get hurt. When you're done watching him hover, you can suck him up, and since you went through most of the capturing animation already, he'll almost instantly go in your vacuum. Speaking of storing things again, did you know you can also store an EGAD call? There is one known place to do it, which accidentally happened to a runner named Vark back in 2013. By forcing the boo from the sitting room, which is the room right next to where Soupy resides, out of the hallway, attempt to capture him in a very specific spot in between the hallway and the staircase. Doing so will cause you to capture him in the middle of the transition from a lit up room to a dark room. Stay in that spot when Egad calls you, and after the call is over, his face will still be there, as if he's just lonely and needs some sort of companionship. If you open a locked door, or attempt to trigger any event which involves a cutscene, Luigi will softlock and the event will not progress. You can cancel this out though, by simply collecting another boo in a room you can access. As per usual, Egad calls you afterwards, as if he hadn't already left, and when he's done, he'll finally get the message and leave you alone. Walking throughout the mansion, you'll find that its rooms have many things to offer, like... Wait, what is that? What the f*** is that? This rather strange effect is caused by an element exploding against a wall while resetting the game at the right time. This effect will happen in the same room that the explosion occurred. A very consistent method was found by lining up Luigi with this line in the kitchen floor, shooting a ball at the element by pressing the left trigger all the way down, which is easiest to do in a lit up room, and then hitting the reset button on the console right after. If timed right, this glitch should occur. You can perform this with either fire or ice. While recording the footage, the attempt was made to do it with water, 
However, it doesn't seem to be possible at the moment. This is due to the fact that when shooting a ball of water, the ball will continue to increase in speed, whereas with fire or ice, it remains a consistent speed. Oh yeah, and sometimes it'll just crash. Imagine this, if you will. You're starting the game from a fresh hidden mansion file. You enter the foyer and walk up the stairs, noticing something is different with the room. Once you make it to the top of the stairs, without warning, this happens. Wait, what? That looked weird. What was that? What? What is this? What? 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 What is this? Dude, I just found area one skip. <laughs> what? This is exactly what happened as speedrunner Pablo runs. Nothing about this chain of events made sense. How did the element exploding occur? Why did the parlor cutscene decide to play when it wasn't even in the right room? I knew I had to do some digging. After multiple theories and attempts at pulling this off elsewhere, I decided the only logical thing to do would be to try to recreate this glitch again. Knowing how it works in the kitchen, I attempted to perform it in this upper part of the foyer using ice. No good. It seems to hit the wall too fast if you're soft resetting, and it won't let you shoot after a certain time when you hit the reset button. We already know that water accelerates constantly, so that definitely wouldn't work, especially in a hallway this short. Seeing as how we've exhausted our options thus far, there can only be one last resort. As you can see, this seems to definitely pull off the exact same effect that happened to Pablo. Why exactly does this happen? Can it be used elsewhere to activate any other events? Or even affect bosses in some way? After more testing and theory crafting, I was able to recreate the fortune teller key spawn glitch that HD Lax had found accidentally. <laughs> It seems that, while the glitch is occurring, as long as there is a connecting room which has candles that activate something, it will activate it early, as perhaps the rooms are already partially loaded. Though, could this affect anything else? In the back of my mind, I had thought, maybe, just maybe, this could be the key to a Chauncey 1 cycle. If you're not already aware, Chauncey can be beaten in a minimum of two cycles. A cycle is the amount of time a boss will go through their motions before being able to take damage. For the longest time, two cycles was the very minimum amount that anyone could do. If one cycle were possible, this would give speedrunners quite an advantage, potentially saving around 35 to 40 seconds. So I did more digging. I later found out that the game will crash sometimes in certain areas such as Egad's lab, the ghost portrifications room, the gallery, and some boss maps. I didn't quite understand why until somehow the glitch was able to happen in the gallery while going for attempts to recreate HD Lax's fortune teller room glitch. Things were not starting to make sense until it hit me. As soon as I discovered what may be happening, I really dug deep into the game, going as far as to compare positions of the boss maps in relation to the positions of the mansion. Then it made sense. Most boss maps would have the same coordinates as the foyer meaning that if the glitch were to be activated against a solid wall or object that is also present in the other map, then this effect will take place. If the explosion on a mansion wall doesn't line up with the wall in the other map, then the game will crash as the element can't explode midair. After a lot more theory crafting and testing, I found that you can actually cause this effect to happen on the floor, which does in fact line up with the floors of the boss stages. This even worked with the ice, although the timing was pretty strict. Unfortunately though, this is where the excitement of a new find came to a tumble, as while it did work in the boss fights, and looked pretty cool doing it, nothing about the bosses changed. Not even Bulasis, especially when done with the ice element. So close, and yet so far. Hey! Did you know Luigi can stand on his head? Within the mansion, there are these flip pads that will bring you either to the ceiling or back down to the floor. If you suck up a boo and just before Egad calls, move over to stand on the pad, Luigi will freeze mid-animation to have this conversation. It won't be until you finish the conversation that gravity will resume and carry you to your destination. While the flip pads do work, there are times where they don't quite work like they're supposed to. 
In the tea room, there are two of these, so you can make it on top of the table where the chest for the ice element will spawn. When you enter for the first time, the room will be dark and you'll be greeted by these grabber ghosts. Try flashing the ghost with your flashlight and walking into the flip pad just a little bit after. If timed right, you should flip through the ceiling or floor of the tea room. When clipping through the pad on the floor, you'll end up in the ceiling of the rec room. And yes, you can still work out while on the ceiling. Unfortunately, if you scan the mirror, you will not in fact spawn in the foyer upside down. The Game Boy Horror will be upside down, but you'll hear Luigi flipping back to the floor. The game devs were actually really smart at preventing these kinds of bugs from happening. Now, if you were to clip through the pad on the ceiling, you'll end up on the balcony. Well, considering that the ice element needed to fight Blue Losses was in the tea room in a chest that spawns after you capture the ghosts in there, and you just clipped up to the balcony when the room was dark before you could get that element, you can see where this is going. Returning back to breaking the order of events in the game, you can play through and collect the necessary items and keys to progress through areas, and later on eventually skip the second boss, Bogmire, to go do Blue Losses instead. Collect the Bulasa's key and you'll see all the ghosts you've captured so far, from areas 1 through 3. From here, you can actually beat Bogmire if you wish. Upon doing so, you might notice that after defeating him, instead of spawning back in the graveyard with the chest containing the key to unlock area 3, you will instead be brought back to the balcony. The game basically freaked out when it noticed that the furthest boss completed was Bulasa's, so it brought you back to the balcony instead. Allow me to now focus your attention on the final boss fight, Upon entering the secret altar, you'll notice there are a couple of candles to the right and some chandeliers. Interacting with these will spawn money. The chandelier closest to the door will spawn a sapphire. You can use the sapphire to mess with the cutscene that leads up to the final fight. Using the vacuum, bring it over to you while also walking towards King Boo to enter the cutscene. The sapphire should reach Luigi, and he will grab it while the cutscene is playing. You might not notice anything is wrong until King Boo turns the room dark and starts spinning. The crown will not fall off the top of his head like it should. When he enters the Mario turn Bowser painting, some of the shiny particles from his crown will be flashing. Finally, Luigi will still have the sapphire in his hand, and you can even see it hanging out of the painting just before it transitions to the final stage. When you first arrive in the arena, you're greeted by a very giant Bowser. He'll attack you with everything he's got, including breathing fire, using a super inhale to chew you up and spit you out, throw spiked bombs at you, or if you get too close, whack you with his tail. If you're too far away from him for his attacks to do anything, he'll jump up and eventually land very dramatically. If you can get him to one of the far corners of the arena and stand right next to the chimney in the middle, he'll land on the roof of the chimney, which will push him back out of bounds. He may stay there for a bit, however he'll smarten up and jump back in the arena. The game also gets wind of this by not allowing that to happen again, no matter what you try. Of course, it can be performed again after resetting the game and starting the fight once more. Once you pop off Bowser's head, King Boo will escape the now empty puppet with a whopping 500 HP. Getting him down lower to suck him up is, of course, the main objective. After some time, he will go back into the Bowser suit. If he goes back in while he has less than 200 HP, Bowser will put his head on backwards and run around the entire stage aimlessly for a while, at least until he remembers to put his head on the right way. The direction Bowser moves when running aimlessly is dependent on where Luigi is at the time. Knowing this, if you stand at just a slight angle to the right or left of him, depending on where he is, he'll bounce off the back wall and run into the chimney. Normally, he's supposed to bounce off of surfaces, although he won't against the front of this chimney. Instead, he'll just keep running and inching very slowly in whatever direction he's going until, eventually, he runs past it. Given that his in-game timer for running around ran out a while ago, he will immediately stop after bouncing against only one wall and put his head on right. After completing King Boo, you'll return back to the secret altar and will be greeted to one final call from Professor Eged. After the two of you have a chit chat, you'll pick up the Mario painting, finish converting all the captured portrait ghosts into paintings, count the fat stack of money you've collected, and have a heartwarming reunion with your brother. Congratulations, you've now beat the game. But what if you wanted to beat the game faster? Well, you could take up doing speedruns. Looking back at what speedrunners do, you'll find that they can complete the game in a pretty quick fashion, as little as about 8.5 minutes when going out of bounds. 
You might also find that as for King Boo, they can complete the boss in two cycles. For this boss, when you pop off Bowser's head with a bomb and suck up as much health as you can before King Boo goes back in, that entire series of events counts as a cycle. Well, what if I told you that while making this video, a new strategy was discovered to go even faster? Thanks to runners like Red Mountain, Saria 100, and Snap, you can now complete King Boo in only one cycle. At the beginning of the fight, stand behind this pillar and hold both the left and right triggers. When Bowser's rolling out the bombs, aim the vacuum somewhat towards the right at an upward facing angle. Grab onto the first bomb that lands and shoot it immediately after. Hold on to the right trigger again. If everything goes right, you should have knocked his head off earlier than you were meant to. Following this, using some manipulation by angling your vacuum to the left a bit, suck up King Boo until he's around 390 HP, or at least less than 400. Finally, make your way over to the other bomb, which should ideally be right next to the middle chimney, and while still holding the left trigger all the way, only hold the right trigger about halfway or less. Doing this will allow you to angle your vacuum to grab the bomb and shoot it at the floating Bowser head, while not auto-locking onto King Boo. If done right, you should have hit the Bowser head again, which will allow you to work on King Boo for a while. The rest is a crucial part as well, as you have to suck up as much HP as you can without letting King Boo go too high up in the air. Sometimes you can get away with holding down the vacuum while not moving, but instead letting the auto lock move you. At least, until the Bowser head shows up again. From there you'll have to start moving. If King Boo does go too high up, you can try R pumping to bring him down but sometimes it just might not work. Once his HP is around 75 to 100, using R pumps for the rest of the suck up at the same speed that you would do for normal booze, you can capture him in one cycle without letting him go back in the suit to hide. It's quite a loaded trick, but it's very fulfilling once you finally manage to do it. You might also be asking, how wasn't this found out about earlier? Actually, this glitch was found a couple years prior in the release of the Luigi's Mansion remake for the 3DS. It was only a matter of time before someone found out exactly how to do it. Well, that initial discovery for the original GameCube version would be found due to the runner Red Mountain being so bored that he decided to play the game with his feet. Somehow, by some miracle, he was able to pull off the first step in this titan of a glitch in this very unorthodox manner. So far, you've seen a lot of weird and interesting glitches, but here are some that can only be seen if you were playing on a Japanese copy of the game. You might be thinking, wait, what's so special about the Japanese version that you can't do on the other versions? Well, this really boils down to the fact that Luigi's Mansion was first released in Japan in September of 2001, with later releases following over the course of a year. So with these later releases of the game, that gave them time to patch any sort of bugs or glitches that they came across, while the original release gets everything they couldn't check at that time. For example, you may recall the Boo tech skip mentioned earlier by sucking up any sort of cloth right after collecting a Boo. Well, you can do the same sort of concept with this mouse hole. When activated, this mouse hole will inhale you and you'll enter the treasure room. But by walking into the mouse hole right as you're sucking up a boo, you'll collect it while swirling in and pop through to the other room without the hassle of an unwanted call. This of course works both ways, as a boo is hiding in this room as well. You may or may not already know about the fact that the portrait ghosts that lurk throughout the mansion will drop pearls while you're capturing them. Pearls, as you might have already guessed, are a source of money. One of the main things you can do in Luigi's Mansion is collect the money hidden in objects and furniture collect enough and you can end up with a pretty nice mansion, or a pretty puny house if you're slacking. Well, what if I told you that you can effectively cause inflation by printing more money? Once you have acquired any element, you can perform what is known as a vacuum cancel while walking into a pearl to collect it, twice. Let's briefly talk about vacuum cancels. A vacuum cancel is most often used by speedrunners to pull out their vacuum in lit up rooms faster. By shooting a ball of an element, and then immediately after hold out the vacuum, you can skip the animation of Luigi pulling out his vacuum. You might often see this when a boo is spawning in, where the speedrunner will want to pull out their vacuum as fast as possible, so that they either don't lose any time, or lose the boo altogether. This can only really be done in a lit up room, 
as in a dark room, Luigi will already be holding out his flashlight, and because of this, the animation for pulling out the vacuum is distinctively shorter and will not stop you from moving while doing so. Not to mention, it doesn't quite work the same way when shooting a ball of element in the dark. Now, by performing this vacuum cancel while walking towards a pearl, you can effectively collect it twice. The reason being is that you can collect money by either walking right into it or vacuuming it up. When you time a vacuum cancel right while walking into it, the game registers that the pearl is being collected by touching it, but also registers that the same pearl is being collected by vacuum. This same principle of collecting an item twice can also be applied to hearts and gold bars. However, the same process cannot be performed on an object that will cause Luigi to hold it up towards the camera, such as duping gold diamonds to end the game with an extra 40 million in money. Even though this glitch is being put with the Japanese exclusives, it has been said that it's possible to perform on at least the US version as well, although the timing may be quite different, potentially even harder. Not to deny the possibility of it being doable on other versions, but if it is, there isn't much footage of it being done anywhere. Well, what's left to talk about? Oh yeah, that's right, you can release the demon hiding in the game. <laughs> Basically, all you have to do is this. Open up a file on the file select screen and select a mansion. Once the text is finished being written out in the text box, instead of pressing A to continue and go to the mansion, hold down X, B, and start until the title screen appears again. Open up another save file. You might notice the music is gone, and that means you're doing it right. This time, when you select a mansion, progress through the text box by pressing either A or B, and when the screen goes to black, hold down X, B, and start again until once more you see the title screen pop up. On any other version of the game, this would do nothing. However, on the Japanese version, you will be greeted with some variant of this sound. <laughs> Horrifying, isn't it? You can also achieve different results by repeating the first step multiple times. Some are more chaotic, and may last longer than others. Do it too many times though, and your game may crash. Once again at the final boss, towards the end when you gotta hold a King Boo and can capture him to finish the game, right around the time he gets captured, press X to bring up the Game Boy Horror first person view. You've done it correctly if you see the Game Boy Horror brought up when you're supposed to be finishing the game. Cancel out of that and you can walk around the arena freely, floating disembodied Bowser head and all. You can stay here for as long as you like. Just remember the area that you captured him in, as you'll want to walk back to that exact spot in order to grab the crown and complete the game. You may not notice anything strikingly different compared to the other regions. However, the crown on top of King Boo's head in the Japanese version has an interesting property that hadn't been removed. When sucking him up, if he gets close enough to the ground, you might accidentally walk into the crown and just... take it. Yes, that's right, you don't even have to defeat the final boss to defeat the final boss. Rather, you'll notice you actually didn't grab the crown, King Boo is still hanging around with his remaining HP left, and the disembodied Bowser head will glitch out before falling down. Following this, everything else will play out as normal, though things will start to seem off once you go to play the credits. As a matter of fact, the credits won't even be there. It's as if you've entered Area 5. Basically, you can free roam the mansion while having no other tasks left to do. No, the attic won't let up or anything. It'll be just the same as it was going into the final fight. Although, if you enter the secret altar, you'll notice some things are wrong. Well, for one, the painting of Mario is back up on the wall, even though we had just seen Luigi grabbing it off the wall and bringing it back to the lab. He is in his worn out post-battle state though, and will remain like that for possibly forever. There's also a floating Luigi arm just doing nothing. It's even bigger than Luigi's arm size. Oddly enough, this is actually the arm model used during the close-up of when he grabs the painting off the wall. With all that being said, you can roam around the room as you please, and maybe even play with a fire here a bit. Is fire supposed to do that? You might also be asking, is this acceptable to do in speedruns? The answer to that, unfortunately, is a big N-O. 
Given that the credits never play out, it will be as if you never actually completed the game. Doing this will result in an incomplete story, and the mansion will end up becoming purgatory. Despite all that, there is something else you can do, which can cut the fight out altogether. Thanks to Sario 100, you can nab the crown without even fighting. Usually, when you walk close to King Boo on the altar, the cutscene leading up to the fight begins. This cutscene barrier is the only obstacle standing in the way of you and the end of the game. You can cancel out the barrier by scanning a candle while falling into the trigger that starts the cutscene. When timed right, it will completely cancel out this barrier as the game detects that you've already hit it, even though it was cancelled by the text box of Luigi's admiration for the furniture. This means that it will be cancelled for as long as the system remains powered on, or if you save the game right after, will remain on the file forever. On the US and PAL versions, when trying to grab the crown, you won't actually be able to grab it, much like how you can't do the crown theft during the fight on these versions as well. Instead, when vacuuming it, it'll rapidly make the capture sound. That's it, nothing else. But, if you were to perform this on the Japanese version, Luigi will actually grab it, and the rest of the events will play out just like it does when you make it back to the altar. Well, almost. Once this is all said and done, the credits still won't play, and again will not be a viable strategy for completing the game as fast as possible. In this video, we've explored a range of glitches such as nearly creating a cursed save file, skipping lots of text, crashing the game a number of times, roaming the mansion in between floors, and even incompletely finishing the game. Not every glitch imaginable was demonstrated in this video, as we may never know how many glitches, tricks, or strategies lie within the game. At any rate, I have been the Glitch Doctor. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when a new video like this has been uploaded. You can also follow me on Twitch to watch me stream live, mainly doing speedruns of various games.